Well, welcome in to episode 21 of the Runner's Recap with head coach Rod Barnes. As always, coach, we are happy to see you. Happy to see you in all blue today, too. Yes, I'm happy to be seen. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Well, no. you you are uh, making it back from a trip to my hometown of Arizona. Yeah. So, yeah, that one didn't end the way you guys wanted, but you no. guys found a bit of your flow and a hit a bit of your stride in this game, especially in that first half, but yeah. of course end up losing this one 73 to 69. Yeah. But what good things did you see? And um, we can start this off with Mr. Jarkel Joyner. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good start right there. I mean, he really had a really good game. He's really playing uh, in a good flow right now, uh, playing really aggressive, uh, both offensively and defensively. And there in the first half, he had a great first half, but he finished the game strong also, and uh, he's really been a go-to guy here lately. Yeah, and of course, right before this half ended, he would knock down that uh, bit of a buzzer beater for himself to get you guys going into the locker room. So what was the conversation before heading out for that second half? I'm sure you guys felt like you were in a good position. Well, we did. We, we felt like it was halftime. We talked to our guys about, you know, coming back out and, and being focused. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, we finished the half there strong. And then the second half we came out and I really thought I, to be on the road, I thought we established ourselves. We got a lead and all of a sudden they hit a couple of big threes. But yeah, they're a big guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had our chance there at the end, as you can see, had a good shot from Jarkel that didn't go down. But I thought our effort was good. I thought our team played with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, you know, I'm always excited to see our team. I thought in the last couple of weeks, uh, we kind of found ourselves a little hurt, a little fatigue. And as a coach, you kind of got to look in their eyes. It, eyes tell you a lot about what the team is thinking. I thought we went over there uh, with the frame of mind that we can win the game. And I thought we played to win. And I uh, didn't really think that's been the case the last two weeks, you know, that we were really playing with that kind of fire all right, in our eyes, but it's back now, and, and I'm excited about that. That's good. So you found the fire in good old Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and another thing, Coach, that I noticed is just uh, the team on defense was just all over swarming the ball. Is that yeah. something you saw where the fire was lit a little bit to get that roadrunner defense back to where it needed to be? Well, that's what we talked about. We felt like over the past couple of weeks, we kept talking about our identity, you know, that, that we're a defensive team, we play hard. And uh, we had not been doing that consistently. You know, we would do a little bit in the first half, maybe do it when we get behind. And I think, you know, losing the games that we lost at home early on, uh, GCU, uh, New Mexico State, and Rio Grande Valley, right behind each other, I think it took someone out of us. And, you know, even though, again, we knew we had some guys not healthy, it just took something away from our team. Now, as we went to, to that game, everybody was available. Uh, Taze Moore still needs to get better, yeah. but you know our team was healthy, and I think they had a, a confidence about themselves that hey, we we we're about to get started, get rolling again, and that's a good start. Uh, we didn't finish, but that's a good start. So we've got two games this week, and uh, I really believe that we're going to come back and you'll see run of basketball like we all like to see it. All right, well, two games this week to end out the regular season. Yes. So. When you guys find yourself in the middle of the standings, obviously New Mexico State kind of has grabbed the top spot in the conference right, right now, but is your focus on the WAC tournament or are you trying to keep these two games on the game plan or make sure you guys are good to go <laughs> because that tournament is really what's yeah. important now? Well, you know, especially the first game. I mean, you want to come back and establish yourself because again, we have not been playing with the same kind of uh, urgency, uh, attention to details like we would like it. We had that in the Grand Canyon game. So right now we'll be really locked in and trying to continue to play well. And we, we feel like, you know, we're a week away, a week and a half away from the tournament. If we could play well, like I believe we will, we feel like the tournament will take care of itself. We've done enough experimenting. Because guys have been hurt, we've had enough guys that have been on the floor that I think will be ready to play. So, uh, you know, we'll go uh, working and they're extremely hard. Uh, expecting to win the two last games, which both of them will be tough. Right. I mean, our league is tough. <laughs> you know, some people say, well, what standing, what position you would like to be in? I, I don't even think it matters this season. I just think it's going to matter when we get to Las Vegas who, who's playing well and who can play well in the tournament. 
Right, and so this first game for you guys on the road at Seattle U, you yeah. guys were able to beat them at home, but again, this WAC conference, man, it's just any given day, anything can happen. So looking at Seattle U, what you guys were able to do before you handled them, uh, what are you looking to do this go around on the road? Well, it's, it's unusual, you know, it happens to be the last series that we had, this being the last, I mean, weekend. That's, those were the two teams we played the first weekend. Mm -hmm. So it's almost <laughs> been two months almost since we've seen each other. So we, there's going to be some filling out. Uh, I think, again, we've got to come out and just stick to what we're trying to do right now, uh, not worry about so much of what they're doing, because we want to continue to play well. We want to continue to defend. I thought we controlled Tempo over there uh, at Grand Canyon, and we'd want to do the same thing. Uh, when you're on the road, you want to give yourself the best, best chance you can to win. I thought we did that, and uh, we'll go into this game with the same kind of uh, preparation as far as, hey, do what we do well, and hopefully, uh, you know, give ourselves a chance to win, and hopefully we can close. Yeah, and I think that was one of the games you mentioned there's been some time <laughs> between the last series time. for this, yes. but we got to see a lot of points off the bench, and that was yeah. a big deal, and that's when that identity of the team really showed. Right. And then again, when you guys played Utah Valley at home, right. this one came down to the buzzer beater, Taze Moore, and as you mentioned, you're hoping to get him back to full strength, right. but of course, uh, when you look at this team, do you do you imagine this to be another hard-fought game like it was at home for you? I, I do. Almost every time we play them, it goes down to the whack. I mean, their coach, is, Coach Pope, is a good friend of mine, and we keep saying, man, how can this, you know, every time we go down, it's almost a buzzer beat or something happens at the end of the game. And obviously, we're on the good end of this one, and <laughs> hopefully we'll be on the good end of it this weekend. But two teams that we play a lot different, but uh, I think we've been around each other and scouted each other a lot. And we know each other's team really well. And it's just been close game after close game after close game. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can go over there and not be a close game in our favor. So we don't have to, you know, score at the end uh, to win the game. But uh, I'm expecting a hard fought, tough game. I think both teams will be preparing also to go to the tournament. So you want to try to yeah. Make sure you leave on a good note. Yeah, for us lovers of the game, it's always fun to see that. But as a coach, yeah. I'm sure I just want to check. How's your heart been doing with all these games that have come down to the wire? There's been one too many in the whack. But how are you doing yeah. after this almost finishing out the season here? Well, I am. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited because as I told the players, to just, you know, when you're going through the struggles, the season is so long. And I think we had a down time there at the wrong time. Uh, so we didn't play well when we really needed to play well, that we didn't finish when we really needed to finish. But just to see uh, the pop, the energy, the enthusiasm, the excited about, I think our guys are really excited about this next couple of weeks. And, you know, as they're excited, obviously the coach, I'm excited. So uh, we're planning to go to Vegas and do big things. Uh, our players are talking about it. Uh, but we've got work to do. We've got to continue to work this week and get better. So next week, hopefully we're at our best. Yeah, so we'll finish uh, the season out here on the road and then uh, uh, see you out there in Vegas for the WAC tournament. Vegas, yeah. Man, has time flown. It's just small. It's gone so fast. <laughs> Every season, I'm sure, feels that way. But, man, yes. I feel like we were just started this, and now we're yeah. already here towards the tail end of the season. 21? 21, episode 21. Wow. But episode 21... The seat is still hot for yes. the breakdown with Barnes. Okay. I see uh, you have the sweatsuit there, but I, I mean, you feeling extra warm today? I am. I am. <laughs> I, I mean, I, whoa. It's hot in here. Yeah. Well, it's always, <laughs> it's uh, always here. <laughs> this is always my favorite time. But again, yes. as we've switched it up lately, I, got I you. throw the last question at you to throw to me. I so, got it. so yes. you have that. We're but, ready. All right, coach. So, uh, looking at this entire season, I mean, yes, you have two games left, but. What was the one win that this team had that taught you the most? Wow, that, that taught me the most. Uh, I about, would say, yeah, about this team in particular. I would say probably the San Jose game was probably the one. We were kind of we were behind, we came back, we hit a shot at the buzzer. Uh, we probably played with as much uncertainty <laughs> in that game, as you probably can, can say. But then uh, we figured out a way to win the game. So that, that was big. It was a big comeback. 
I, I knew then, like, this team wouldn't give up. They would fight. Uh, when we hit adversity, they would kind of work their way through it. So that was the, probably the biggest win for us that, in my mind, that I said, we could, we could be all right. All right, so early on you saw the heart of this team. Heart of this team yes. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, you guys hit adversity late in the season, talking about yes. those three straight home losses. Right. What's the one loss this year that you learned something about this team that you were proud of? Oh, that I was proud of, yeah. Uh, the one loss was probably, um, oh, wow. I would say probably New Mexico State. Mm -hmm. Uh, because when we lost the game in New Mexico State, it, it could have really, obviously, was a tough loss uh, just to see our guys kind of work their way back, uh, you know, to compete the next weekend, it, I mean, the next few days, because that could have been a tough game for us to lose and not be able to bounce back. Uh, we lost that game, and we didn't play great against Rio Grande Valley, but we showed some heart. Mm -hmm. And we played together, and we kind of, stuck together, which to me, that was that was super important. And as you guys hit the road for these final two games yeah. again, it, when it's postseason, it's a new slate. So yes, everything kind of gets is. wiped away. So how do you keep your guys hungry to finish the regular season outright, but then hope that that's a spark, though, right. for that postseason play? Well, I, I think probably because we all know uh, the kind of team we have. And obviously, we're disappointed in some of the losses we've mm -hmm. had, especially at home. Uh, I think after the, this past weekend, our team is excited about playing. Uh, I think also we gained some confidence. We went on the road to a team that, you know, here we thought we had a great chance, but they would have kind of started a letdown, you know. They would kind of turn the tables on us. And then to go to their place, play them. So I'm sure our guys, as I know coaches, we thought, well, if we can play that well and have a chance to beat them, uh, they're in number two team right now. That obviously, if we get to Vegas in a neutral court, uh, then you know we got a great shot to beat them there. So uh, I think our kids are getting excited about playing, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, just because the season is so long, you know, we all know as coaches that that kind of you got to have an ebb and flow there with with the team. And uh, I see our team on the rise again. So I don't think I have any problems the last two games trying to motivate them to get them ready. Actually, I think our guys are, are ready to prove that, that they are ready to play and we're ready to prepare these last two games to get to Vegas and see what happens. Every team that's, as you said, it's a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Every team's going to get to Vegas, going to be excited, think they can win it. And, uh, again, I think the teams that play the best are the ones going to be in the finals because I think it's been a wacky kind of season <laughs> and uh, for the whack tournament it's a whack tournament i think <laughs> once we get there uh, we'll see there still can be some strange things happen yeah. the only thing about it is is it's winter advances and uh, we're hoping that the runners oh yeah and we've seen this before um you mentioned after the new mexico state game a little deja vu that yeah as you said, the wackiness of what happens with this conference <laughs> is, hey, when tournament time comes, that could be your chance to make your statement. So, yes. so the runners, that's what the, that's <laughs> the what focus will do. be. Exactly. Okay, got exactly. it. So here's a little bit. I'm going to um, just explain myself. Okay. In the game of basketball, the one thing that frustrates me, we've talked about this early on when we first started this, is at the very end of the game, time management, trying to foul, bring them to the line, slows down the play right of the game. Right. But obviously, it's a strategy. Right. So for you as a coach, to me, I always look at that and I get it. It stops the clock. It could get the ball back in your hands. But I feel like it must be simpler to hit a free throw than to hit a contested shot. So why not just let the play unfold and try to get the ball back, especially with a team that can rebound? Okay. What What are your thoughts? Tell Explain me, this to me. You, you've got me. What is the score? What is the situation? <laughs> yeah. Well, this know. is just, I've always thought about this. With games, it always kind of breaks down to the end. Right. And then you see that, the fouling, and then go to the line, and then right. foul again, and go back to the line. Right, right. And I've always looked at it as like, man, at this level of competition, when you're in these these guys or women at this right. level can hit those free throws, so why not just let the game, if you're close, let's say it's a two point, three point game, if you're close, try to let them miss a shot, play them hard, get them out, the ball back on defense, and then go make your shot on the other end. Yeah, but if, if you let them make the <laughs> I'm gonna shot. I'm going to get coached up here. Well, I'm ready I'm for it. I'm just saying, no. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, is in, uh, a lot of times as coaches, we don't necessarily want them to foul in gotcha. situations, but <laughs> sometimes, uh, 
You know, you're at the end of the game, and most teams that are good teams, they're going to execute. They're going to get the ball where right. they want it. They're going to get it to the shooter they want. They're going to get in the position they want. They're going to get the matchup they want. And then their chances and their probabilities of scoring is pretty high. Okay. And sometimes when that happens, the, the offensive guy is so aggressive because this is his favorite move or this is his favorite <laughs> play. It was like the other night at the end of the game when Jarkel took the shot. Right. Uh, it, the move that he made is a move that I knew he was going to make. I knew he was going to get an open shot. I didn't know whether it would get contested or not, but I knew this is his deal. And he ended up missing a shot. But we got the shot we wanted. If we get a chance to do it, we'll, we'll take that shot again. We may get into it a little bit different, get a little right. bit of false motion. But he was very aggressive. You saw it was a good shot. They missed yep. it. So yep. it just all depends. you got different things, guys that – may have the ball in the hand, can't shoot free throws, and you put them on the line to right. uh, the other team. You know, right now, execution is so big. And you start seeing teams really uh, not play as fast as much because they want to make sure I get the ball to this guy right. <laughs> yeah. at this point. Against this that's kind point. of how the game's evolved, right? Like it, it kind of slows it down no. a little bit because yeah. it's all about, I mean, you see it with GCU too. They right. had that inbounds play that it's like, you know where they're going right. and that was exactly. his shot. Exactly. And it's like, exactly. there's so much strategy, strategy. And I'm like, let's just play the game. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> well it was kind of like with, uh, you, you were talking about that shot and, right. and well, unfortunately we didn't cover it. And one of the reasons we didn't cover it because we had subbed. Mm. And our yeah. guy that's normally not out there was guarding the guy that ended up shooting a shot. Right. And even before, when they took the ball out, Coach Conroe was our assistant. He scouted the game. He kept saying, it's going to be a corner three shot. <laughs> Get out to the corner. And, you know, again, <laughs> we coaches, like, we want to make it happen, but yep. we're not out there. But, you know, that's what you see right now. There's yeah. not – there's very few teams that has – like tricks in their bags now. <laughs> Everybody's used everything up. Yep. <laughs> so, so, you know, you kind of know what to expect. It's just whether the guy that you're getting the ball to or the play that you're running, whether it's execute. There's also now the officials at this particular point play a factor in the game because mm -hmm. a lot of those guys are trying to get to the conference tournament. They're trying to be selected to the NCAA tournament. So that whistle has gotten really tight now. So they're blowing the whistle more. Mm -hmm. uh, it just happens. And then, you know, we talk about it after the tournament and talk about it after the NCAA tournament. They talk about flow, and that's what you <laughs> yeah. want. You want flow. Yep. And we talk about it every year. But when we get to championship time and who's going, yeah. you know, and what seedings, things just kind of tighten down a little bit. So. Yeah. Uh, Those bang bang plays don't always go your way. Yeah, they don't <laughs> yep. go your way. Yeah. Uh, well, that's why we have coaches in, right? That's it. That's it. <laughs> we gotta learn from that. So that right. way, I'm just like, I I just never was a fan of the intentional fouling, but I do get the strategy. Right. Yeah. But I'm just like, I mean, maybe it's the nature of I played soccer where you just let the clock run, and yeah. <laughs> so you just keep it. Yeah. <laughs> keep it going. We'll keep it going, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, coach. That's the last of my questions in the hot seat. Now, you can put me in the hot seat. Okay, good this, uh, uh, well, tell me this. You've been doing this uh, uh, over your career. Your for time. 20, 30 years. <laughs> 20, 30 years yeah. now. No, but uh, <laughs> what is the most, what fires you up about what you do? Like, okay. what, what gets you or you wake up or you get this story or something happens or this time yeah. of the year? What's like, you like, oh man, I love this. So it's funny you say that because literally I can, I can be passionate talking about sports with anyone. I just love sports. I love what it taught me as a young girl growing up. I love what it, what it teaches people together, bringing people together, the right. team, the teamwork. I mean, you can't learn that any better than playing sports. I, I would feel like right. biased opinion, but I think that truly the thing that gets me so excited about this job is meeting the people and the characters and knowing this this experience I've had with you, getting to know you, what fires you up, fires me up. Okay. Learning what the coaches and the players, why they choose to be a part of their game and what brings them day in and day out, because it's tough. I mean, right. I mean, learning the adversity you guys have dealt with just this season alone, but you choose to keep going out there, 
that gets me pumped. And I love to hear your story and why you know you love to go there. So I think, I mean, if that answers the question, it's it's the people well, in the game. Well, you didn't really answer the question <laughs> because you're on the hot seat. No, I'm kidding. That was, that was, Burned. That was, <laughs> but yeah, that was no, a great answer. And, I love and the, the people. The point is, is I, I think you're still, where's, Thank you for stealing my, my questions uh, and, and answering, but no, that's a great answer. Yeah, the people, yeah, and the people. right, and I think you too. You love the people that have right. been a part of the game. It's just, it's that makes it fun. So you feed off others. I do, yeah. I do. I feed off others. I love the energy because that's one thing too. We've talked about this: the energy right. in a sports environment. Right. Nobody touches it. Yeah. No one touches it. I mean, yeah. and you have it across other entertainment, you know, factors like music and all that. But right. something about being in an arena where people kind of gather together cheering yeah. for the same purpose, purpose. Yeah. that's cool. I like that. Yeah, so I'll be doing this I think for a while, yeah. we'll just say that. <laughs> Unless that changes anytime soon, I hope not, but I'll be doing this for a while, hopefully. I'm there. two for two. <laughs> two for two, great question <laughs> coach. Thank you so much, we will thank end you. on that. And thank you everyone for joining us. We'll see you next week for Runner's Recap.